Hey guys, okay, so the terms that I picked out to be, or the most important concepts for this week were social vulnerability, and I know that's like the whole idea of this module, but I thought it was important to point out that social vulnerability is a multi-dimensional thing, and that um, a lot of the content that we were reading this week was focusing on the intersectional aspect of uh, social vulnerability and how it can, um, those different aspects have an impact on an individual um, in various aspects. Like if a, a person's a disabled woman, like she has a lot more risk um, than someone who's a male um, who's not disabled. So that's just an example. But um, in the article that focused more on um, the vulnerability of women. They talked about the disaster cycle with uh, exposure to risk, risk perception, preparedness behavior, warning, communication, and response, physical impacts, psychological impacts, emergency response, recovery, and reconstruction. And I thought it was interesting going through that article just to see um, how men and women differed and, and how overall women seem to have more of um, the negative consequences after the disaster, but they were um, more prepared and um, they tended to see the risks um, of disasters more than men did. So like they were forward thinking um, and were more prepared and um, their communication was good, but um, like waiting to talk to their husbands about where to go and things like that. But unfortunately they were the ones that suffered more of the consequences, the negative consequences um, once the disaster actually hit. So um, it was just interesting to see the differences between men and women in that article. It was also frustrating to see, especially like when talking about um, the physical and psychological impacts and those types of things, how women were more negatively affected than men. Um, I also found the Van Willigan article very interesting. Um, just kind of eye-opening um, and I, it was I thought it was interesting to point out that um, the one quote from the article where someone was just saying if a community isn't formed of the resources that are available to them and the resources are not going to benefit that community because nobody knows about them uh, when they're talking about um, like facilities that people who are disabled can go to during a disaster and if they don't know that there's a facility that can accommodate them they can't go there um, so that was also something that I think is important just to be aware of. For my muddiest point, um, I think that came from the article about building an effective emergency management organization. Um, just the beginning of the article where they talked about relationships that make up um, an emergency management organization and how there's the horizontal and vertical linkages and just overall understanding that took a little bit more time to see the relationships between the different people in man emergency management. Um, and then for my discussion question, uh, it kind of goes back to the article uh, about by the Van Willigan the Van Willigan article about how more of like the disabled communities. And my question was, what can we do as a community to communicate the resources available to populations who need them? Um, so just how can we let people know about, um, for example, like in the disabled art or the article about um, facilities that are able to accommodate disabled people, like how do we communicate and make sure that the resources that we make an effort to provide People know about so that they can actually use them. Alright. Thanks guys.